Welcome back. In this talk, we'll be discussing on foreign bodies in the ear, nose, and throat. Foreign body is an object or substance that is inappropriately situated in a particular anatomical location. It can be categorized by location or type. The location of the foreign body may be life-threatening, such as in the larynx, or benign, such as in the ear. It can also be subdivided into organic and inorganic type of foreign body. It is important to note the nature of the foreign body that may pose a direct threat to the body tissue, such as a battery. There are several risk factors that increases the chance of foreign body ingestion, inhalation, or insertion. For example, children are curious creatures where they explore using their mouth and ears. Individuals with developmental delay or attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Adults with poor dentition or excessive alcohol consumption. Neurological disease such as Alzheimer's, esophageal dysmotility, and dementia. We have to be wary of the patient with recurrent foreign body presentation as it may be caused by underlying mental health illness such as Munchausen syndrome in which someone pretends to be ill or deliberately produces symptoms or illness in themselves. Children with recurrent presentation of foreign body may be a sign of non accidental injury such as neglect or abuse or Monchosen's by proxy where the caregiver makes up or causes an illness or injury in a person under his or her care. Last but not least, foreign body can also present secondary to trauma, accident or sheer bad luck such as insect in the ear. Right-handed children tend to insert foreign body into their right ear, and this is vice versa for the left hand. The isthmus of the external ear canal is the narrowest point of the ear and is where most commonly foreign body gets impacted. There are a few factors that will dictate the technique of removal of foreign body in the ear, such as the characteristics of the foreign body, being it its shape, size, and consistency, the cooperation of patient, and the positioning of the patient. Well-described techniques are microsuction, grasping, irrigation, and using the wax hook. A nasal foreign body should be considered in any children with unilateral nasal discharge. The most common age of presentation is between two to four years old. A nasal foreign body usually requires a minimum of four days prior to discharge occurring. Prolonged nasal foreign body within the nose can form granulation, which results in the formation of rhinoliths that are radioopaque in nature. There are several well-described techniques, such as placing a hook or Ben Jobson horn probe over and behind the foreign body, removing anteriorly. Father's and mother's kiss, whereby the parent blow into the mouth of the child with the unaffected nostril being held close. Foreign body that are difficult to remove can be taken out under general anesthesia. Foreign body that are difficult to remove anteriorly can be pushed posteriorly into the pharynx and removed through the oral cavity. There is a theoretical risk of nasal foreign body being inhaled. However, this is more probable if the gag reflex is impaired. Hence, it is safe to leave nasal foreign body in a neurologically normal child for operative removal during normal working hours. The most common non-organic 
foreign body ingested by children are coins. On the other hand, adults are fishbone, dentures and foot boluses. The most common location for foreign body to get stuck are the tonsils, tongue base, posterior pharyngeal wall and cricopharynges. Beyond the cricopharynges, there are a few natural narrowings such as the indentation of the arch of iota, left main bronchus and the diaphragmatic hiatus. Small blunt foreign body may pass through this narrowing unhindered. Foot impaction in the absence of any known esophageal pathology should raise the possibility of eosinophilic esophagitis. Patient may present with drooling, dysphagia, chest pain or back pain, pyrexia, and surgical emphysema. Common investigation includes anterior, posterior, and lateral neck x-ray, chest x-ray, and abdominal x-ray to identify the object if it is radio-opaque. This battery may show as a double ring shadow on the x-ray. Prolonged foreign body within the esophagus can lead to complications such as esophageal perforation, mediastinitis, pneumomediastinum, pneumothorax, and aspiration. Patients with foot bolus can be managed medically using buscopan or diazepam. Patients with foot bolus that do not pass with medical treatment or ingestion of inorganic foreign body may require removal under direct vision if it's within the oral cavity. Alternatively, rigid or flexible esophagoscopy if it has passed through the oral cavity. If the foreign body is not removed, it may migrate into the soft tissue of the neck. And delayed in intervention beyond 24 hours may increase the risk of complications. Most inhaled foreign body occur in children younger than 3 years old and boys. Typically, Children younger than the age of 3 years old inhale organic foreign body, whilst children older than 5 years old inhale inorganic foreign body. The mortality from foreign body inhalation is around 1%, and it is the commonest cause of accidental death in children under the age of 3. The presentation may vary depending on the site of the airway obstruction, as well as whether the airway is partially or completely obstructed. Symptoms such as choking, coughing, hoarseness of voice, shortness of breath, wheezing, increased work of breathing, cyanosis or stridor. A high index of suspicion is vital to avoid missing asymptomatic or delayed presentations such as misdiagnosis of asthma due to coughing and noisy breathing. Foreign body can lodge anywhere along the airway such as the larynx, trachea, bronchus, right side more frequently than the left as it is wider and straighter as well as within the segmental region of the lung. Chest x-ray may show a classical hyperinflation of the lung on the side of the foreign body due to the ball valve effect. Complications that can occur with a retained foreign body in the airway include airway compromise, pneumonitis, post-obstructive pneumonia, pneumothorax, chronic lung infection, bronchiectasis, and death. The mainstay management for foreign body in the airway is rigid bronchoscopy under controlled condition of general anesthetic. Ideally, the patient should be lightly sedated and spontaneously breathing. Intraoperative corticosteroid given to minimize edema. Endotracheal intubation, if possible, should be avoided as there is a risk of the foreign body being pushed or migrated during the procedure, causing a complete 
airway obstruction. Topical anesthetic used on the larynx to reduce laryngospasm. Topical adrenaline is very useful to decongest, reduce swelling and bleeding around the foreign body. And it is important to have a second look after a successful removal of a foreign body to ensure that there are no remaining fragments or further foreign body down the airway. Caustic or corrosive agents are chemicals and physical agents that has the potential to cause tissue destruction. Accidental ingestion of this agent are commonly in younger children, whilst in older teenagers and adults are um, primarily due to a suicidal attempt. There are alkali agents with a pH of more than 11.5 that causes liquefaction necrosis, an acidic agent with pH less than 2 causing coagulation necrosis. Liquefaction necrosis causes deeper penetration and more severe damage to the esophagus. Patient may present with symptoms of drooling, pain, stridor, dysphagia, and signs of chemical burns. If they are left alone, it can cause complications such as stricture, pneumonia, tracheoesophageal fistula, edema, mediastinitis, perforation, death, and a 1,000-fold increased risk of esophageal carcinoma. After the initial insult from the corrosive agent, the esophagus go through stages of injury. In the first 24 hours, there will be submucosal edema and ulceration. At day 2 to 5, there is inflammation with thrombosis and at day 5, there is sloughing of the superficial layer. After a week, there will be formation of fibrous tissue in the deeper layers, forming scars and strictures. At week 2 to 5, there will be development of contraction throughout the esophagus. When managing patients who have ingested a corrosive agent, it is important not to perform a gastric lavage or induced emesis as it can potentially cause further damage to the esophagus. Blind passage of NG tube is contraindicated in these patients. If an NG tube is indicated, it should be inserted under direct vision. Neutralization of the substance can cause exothermic reaction, hence it should be avoided in this patient. A direct esophagoscopy can be done to evaluate the esophageal and gastric injury. Ideally, it should be performed between 24 to 48 hours of the initial injury. If it is performed too early, we may miss the severity of the damage. However, if it's performed too late, there is a significant risk of perforation. We can also investigate strictures and perforation using water contrast or barium swallow. The extent of the injury can be classified depending on the degree of esophageal burn. First degree is superficial mucosal injury where the mucosa is mildly hyperemic and edema. Second degree burn is transmucosal in nature where it involves the mucosa, submucosa and possibly an extension into the muscle layer. The lining has white exudate together with significant erythema. Third degree burn is full thickness where there is possible extension beyond the esophagus. A third degree burn has a high mortality and has potential airway compromise where the patient may require intubation or tracheostomy. It is also important to involve other specialty such as the general surgeons as the patient may require 
esophagectomy or exploratory laparotomy to remove necrotic tissue. In summary, foreign body in the ear, nose, and throat is a common presentation both in children and adult. Be wary of battery as it can potentially cause corrosive damage. Magnet can be dangerous if more than one is inserted or a magnet and another metallic object. It is important to remember about non-accidental injury as well as mental health issue in patient presenting with recurrent foreign body. Thank you very much for your time and hope to see you again.